And yes, the Eurofighter, this one. The Eurofighter was designed with air combat as the primary mission. Yep, no multi-role. That came later. The aircraft was designed to fly fast and high to give air-to-air -air missiles the best kinematic conditions in beyond visual range combat. But these ones too. But it also had to be maneuverable and agile in within visual range combat and close quarter knife fights. But these ones too. So do you see the point here? The Eurofighter Typhoon really looks different. Why? Europeans are just smarter. Who said that? Otis, it's you. So we are starting with traditionally competing requirements. Without getting into the math details, you want high wing loading to fly fast and high, but a low wing loading turn quick and have a small turn radius. You want a highly swept back wing to fly fast and high, but a less swept wing is better for maneuvering. Luckily, the design happened at a time when the engineers actually realized that indeed there was a configuration that could offer the best of both worlds. But before getting to that, please give some love to the sponsor of this video. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. At the moment, there are more than 2,000 different assets, aircraft, tanks, ships, and others. You can use all these assets to play dynamic combined arms, peer versus peer battles. I have a soft spot for War Thunder for sentimental reasons, but what I like the most is the level of game details. You see, each vehicle is modeled with individual components. In this way, the damage model is very interesting, very detailed, and the loss of capability is related to the details of the actual hit. And then the graphic is is beautiful, it scales easily to 4K, the sound effects are great, and uh, since I'm an audiophile, I love the music. So overall, it is very immersive and it strikes the right balance between details and playability. I'm an aircraft guy, and when I started playing Second World War aircraft were the centerpiece. I was among the first to play with the Italian 3 when it came out. And now you have almost 100 years of history, spanning from the early 20th century to the modern day. Please go play War Thunder now on PC, Xbox or PlayStation. Please support the people who support me. May I have my private account, sir? Of course, Otis, it's free to play, you don't have an excuse not to. And if you use the link in the description below, there is a large bonus pack with multiple premium vehicles and other implements to get started in the best possible way. Now, back to the video. In the late 70s and early 80s, a few new technologies all came together to unlock the potential of a new aircraft configuration. Delta Canard. Well, new, um, well, you know what I mean, no? We covered this hydrodynamic configuration with a lot of detail on this channel and I really invite you to watch those videos where a younger and leaner me actually tells a fascinating story of how technology really progresses. Well, if you didn't watch those videos, I can tell you that fly-by-wire combined with digital flight controls allowed for pitch and stable designs. And when this was combined with a better aerodynamic knowledge of the effect of canards on the delta wing, well, it all came together. The end result was a very aerodynamically efficient configuration in the flight regimes that are important for a combat aircraft. That is, an excellent transonic and supersonic behavior combined with high maneuverability, high angles of attack and good resistance to spin departure. But even today, if stealth is not the primary consideration, there is no aerodynamic configuration more efficient than Delta Canard for a combat aircraft. Yes, I know it's a big thing to say, but please just bear with me. So the Eurofighter is a classic Delta Canard, as you can see here, with a single tail empennage, two engine and a ventral double air intake. As you can see, there is a certain distance between the canards and the wings. So canard placed in this position actually have a pretty long arm if measured from the aircraft center of gravity. And since on the Eurofighter the canards are used for maneuvering, the torque that they can create around the aircraft center of gravity is pretty high. In fact, the Eurofighter is well known for being highly maneuverable. 
In this view, we can also notice that the aircraft is not area ruled, is pretty flat on the sides, but despite this, apparently the aircraft is pretty aerodynamically efficient, in fact with a relatively low thrust is capable of super cruising and is capable of a high acceleration and a very high ceiling. From this point of view we can clearly see the canards that have a negative dietra, but even more important is noticing that the root of the wing is pretty thick at least in part of the cord and the Eurofighter is already known to be a, a relatively stiff aircraft and this thickness is a clear indication of a relatively stiff wing. As you can see both the wing and the canards have a negative dihedral and this speaks volumes about the roll stability of the aircraft that is, is probably non-existent and is only maintained by the flyby wire and the flight computers. From this point of view we can also clearly see how the leading edge is pretty sharp. This means that on this wing probably the typical vortices of the delta wing are going to be created quite early at a very uh, low angle of attack. This is not defect, this is the intended behavior and the aerodynamic enhancement kit that seems not to be installed on this aircraft actually includes two small leading edge extensions in this position that actually enhance and promote the formation of vortices above the wing. These two small winglets are there for the same reason, they're probably promoting the formation of vortices, in this case above the fuselage, and they're probably useful to keep the vertical empennage and the rudder working at high angles of attack. From this point of view we can also see pretty well the air intakes. These are intakes that are clearly optimized for supersonic flight. There is a splitter plate here, the most classical of the solutions to avoid the ingestion of the boundary layer. And also this is a mobile lip that is used at high angles of attack to promote a smooth ingestion of the fluid and avoid separation in this area of the intake high angles of attack. This picture is actually interesting because we can see the formation of vortices on the wing. We have vortices here, we have vortices here, we have vortices coming out from here and as you can see these end up passing beside the vertical empennage maintaining the rudder effectiveness even at high angles of attack. You may also notice that there are maneuvering slats. This is a characteristic of all modern deltas. They are not used just for takeoff and landing, they are used while the aircraft is maneuvering to increase the lift coefficient of the wing at high angles of attack or during that where you need to increase the lift as much as you can without stalling the wing obviously. So coming to the original question, why this configuration is not more popular? Because nobody is as smart as the Europeans. Who said that? Otis, stop it! Well, one reason is stalled because the canards forming a pretty much 90 degrees angle with the fuselage are a relatively powerful radar reflector. This can be mitigated like the Chinese did with the J20, but it's definitely not ideal. So, no Delta Canard on the F-22. Speaking of the F-15, well, it is an older design and it is a stable design, so it came along a bit too early to really consider Delta Canard. There have been studies though. The Suhoi 27 could have benefited from a Delta Canard configuration, but the Russians just went with powerful engines. However, we have to say that the Flanker family is, from an aerodynamic point of view, extremely efficient. It is probably as good as it gets for a conventional tail design. 
So thank you very much for watching this far and a big thank you to the sponsor of this video. Thank you very much to War Thunder for sponsoring this video and click on the link below. You will get a bunch of goodies that you can use in game to get started in the best way possible. And another big thank you to all those who are supporting the channel by one of donations on PayPal, being Patreons or being members. You can also support the channel by buying a model from Air Models. There is an affiliate link below. I will get a small percentage and there will be no extra cost for you. So, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.